Uh, we are starting the uh, first international meeting online in English as a part of the project called Rational Lighting Policy in Practice, financed by Norway, Iceland and Liechtenstein from the EEA grants under the Active Citizens Fund Regional Program. We are very excited to welcome uh, our lecturer from Slovenia, uh, Yuri Stare, uh, who is an expert on geographical information systems. Uh, he's, he's also an author of uh, Light Pollution Map website, which is the main topic of today's lecture. Uh, but before we start, I will now click quickly introduce you to the meeting rules. So this meeting is organized by Polaris OPP Association in cooperation with the Association Dark Sky Slovenia. Uh, during this meeting, the participants aren't allowed to turn on the, the video cameras and microphones. However, you are free to use the Zoom chat for the purpose of asking questions, etc. If you wish to listen to the Polish interpretation, please join the appropriate Discord audio channel. The link to the tutorial will be also posted in the chat. There is also a Polish sign language interpreter available on the Zoom. Uh, all right, I think we can now proceed with our lecture. So, Yuri, the floor is yours. Could you quickly introduce yourself before the uh, before we start? Uh, yes. Uh, it's a second ahead. My. Yeah, if you can ask for just a quick introduction. Yeah, I have a little problem with the Zoom. It uh, okay, no, minimized no, no just a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see. Just minimize. I have to close it because it minimized and I can't. I can't maximize it. Just a second. Um, okay, uh, we'll wait. Uh, there are always... okay, 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 okay. I think I got it now. Oh, go on. Okay. Uh, so, welcome to all who joined my presentation. Uh, it's titled Light Pollution Map. Uh, my name is, like Jakub already said, Yuri Stare, and in the next half an hour or 40 minutes, um, I'll show you a great online resource uh, and a tool which, you, um, which allows you to uh, examine light pollution in your area or around the world. But first I would like to tell you a little bit uh, about myself and what drove me to uh, create this application. Uh, I am from Slovenia and I really enjoy the view of a natural dark sky. I, I actually went to Australia once for the sole purpose of seeing the natural night sky. And it, it was awesome, you know, and I highly recommend that every earthling should at least once in their lifetime to see the, how the natural night sky really looks like. Also like uh, many of you, I'm an amateur astronomer. More precisely, I, I like to uh, I like astrophotography. Uh, I have my own a little observatory in the rural, rural part of Slovenia where light pollution is not as high as in the cities. I professionally work with geospatial data uh, as an analyst and also as a software developer, uh, which has opened an opportunity to create an application that would serve as a quick way uh, for everyone to see the state of light pollution uh, around the world. Uh, the internet is a great resource of freely accessible satellite and other data, but, but it lacks um, the tools to transform or, or interpret the, this data to, to information. Uh, this is where my application comes in. So, the light pollution 
map is freely accessible by either going uh, straight to, let me just show you. Uh, there we go. By opening a browser and just either entering the www.lightpollutionmap.info or by just entering uh, light pollution map, light pollution map keywords. And usually the first result is my map. So uh, my map contains uh, two distinctive sets of of data or, 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 or how I call it overlays um, in the app that actually deal directly with light pollution. Uh, one is called uh, VIIRS or, or and also called radiance map. Uh, and the other is uh, called the uh, world atlas overlay. They both show light pollution, but uh, in, in a way, in a different way. I get asked many, many times um, by people, what is the difference between those two uh, data sets? There's a big difference, although at a quick glance, they both show um, similar patterns on a map. If you're looking at, at the raw data, uh, cities are uh, bright, rural, rural areas are less bright and un uninhabited places are completely dark. That is why the coloring of those two overlays in, in my applications is very different. So users don't uh, confuse one with the other or, or start comparing one to, to the other. Ra Radiance overlay is a direct product of, of what a satellite sees from space when looking down on earth. While um, World Atlas uh, was created with uh, the same uh, data as input, and, and then it, based on this data, predicts how bright the sky um, should be at, at zenith, which means uh, if you look straight up. Uh, it should be noted that this is only a prediction, uh, and uh, it's it's no means uh, a precise, I mean, value of, of, of light pollution when you look up. Uh, and, and, and this prediction assumes a lot of variables and, and it's uh, uncommon. Uh, it's, it's not uncommon for a sky brightness to, to deviate night to night uh, by as much as 100% in brightness due to um, various uh, uh, atmospheric phenomena such as uh, uh, aerosol density or um, air glow, sun activity and, and so on. Um, not, so now I'll switch to the map. So you can see, there we go. Um, so this is the World Atlas map, and if I switch to to Radiance map, there's quite a lot of Radiance maps, uh, and only one World Atlas map because World Atlas map is very very hard to compute and very hard to calibrate and so on. So it's not as updated as uh, Radiance maps. Radiance maps are usually updated every every year. Uh, now the the units used in in uh, in uh, uh, World Atlas map are expressed in uh, in in uh, magnitudes per arc seconds uh, arc seconds squared, uh, while in Radiance map the units are. If we see here value, it's expressed in 
nanowatts per square centimeters, which is something that a lot of people don't really understand. But but it's not important. The main the main thing is that this unit is linear. So linear. So if uh, one city uh, produces 100 units and the other produces produces 1,000 units of this radiance, means that the the city that produces 1,000 units is 10 times uh, greater light polluter, I would say. Uh, so uh, um, on the other hand, the word atlas uh, overlay uses uh, units that amateur astronomers are or should be familiar with. Um, like I said, those are magnitudes per square arc second. And uh, for those of you, and I think there's quite a few that don't know what this unit is. It's basically um, like this. Uh, the, the darkest location would be 22 magnitude, while the city center, which is quite bright, like sit, like in Warsaw, Warsaw, for example, it's around 18. So 22 versus 18. But one magnitude, we have to remember that one magnitude equals to about 250% change in sky brightness. So that's quite a lot. Uh, so in this means that uh, a sky, which is 18th magnitude, is actually about 40 times brighter than a sky of magnitude 22, which is the, the darkest sky uh, on the planet. But I have to emphasize that the sky magnitude fluctuates up and down by as much as half magnitude, like I said earlier. So let me show you uh, another interpretation of magnitudes by showing you this image. Here is, is, is a kind of vague interpretation how magnitude 22 differs uh, from 18 or 15. 15 is like, uh, you know, if you are in, in Moscow, for example, which is the most light polluted city in the world. And if you are in the center of Moscow, you might see something like 15 or, or 16. Uh, but in, in cities in Europe, even London and Paris, it's, it's usually about 18 or, or 17, maybe or something like that. Uh, and at 22, this, it's, it's something you should at least once in your lifetime, uh, see how that looks like. Uh, so if we go to Poland and hunt for a dark sky using my map, it would be like, first we zoom out, find Poland, and we can a bit, uh, low, uh, higher the opacity of the map, so we can clearly see the darkest regions. And we can see that the darkest region is uh, here down at in the southeastern part of, of Poland. So we can go here, click on a map, and we, it will instantly tell us that it's very, very close to, to natural sky. But this, again, tells us that the zenith is very, very dark. It's almost perfect, you know, it's, uh, it's missing six, six hundredths of a, a magnitude to perfection. But then again, this only tells us how bright the zenith is. In, if we look towards the horizon, it will most certainly, everywhere you go in Europe, it will be orange color everywhere. There's no place in Europe, you know, where uh, there's uh, absolutely uh, pristine dark skies everywhere in which in every direction you look. There, there's no sub, such place, unfortunately. We, we, we destroyed it all. Uh, so you have to go to very remote places like, like I said earlier, Australia or, or 
in the middle of some oceans and so on where people can't live. <laughs> so um, if, we, if we switch to Radiance map, we will see something completely different. Let's say 2021. We actually see that the Radiance map is uh, much more detailed and we can see the, um, the individual uh, settlements. So this helps us if we want to find the darkest location, but try to avoid, you know, that we don't have a, a bright settlement in the vicinity, which uh, can be seen on, on the World Atlas map. On the World Atlas map, everything is blurred, but on the, uh, on the Radiance map, we can clearly see which uh, areas we, we should avoid if, if we want to uh, avoid any uh, bright lights from street lights and, and so on. Uh, we can, of course, also measure distances and we get also a report, azimuth report. Uh, you see that it's uh, kilometers on the left and on the right, it's azimuth angle. So azimuth changes as I drag the, the cursor around. So this is one tool This is quite uh, useful that will tell you the distances and uh, directions of uh, uh, light sources. So um, we have additional tools hidden here in the extended toolbar. And if you open it, um, we can use the area tools, which will tell us uh, how much radiance uh, for example, this uh, village outputs, and it will draw us a graph uh, for each year, and we can see that it's steadily increasing. Uh, this tool is also great for comparing villages or settlements amongst each other. For example, in this case, we can see that the the sun of this settlement is in 2021 around 18. This is the sum of radians. And if we compare with this one, we can see the sum is around six and a half. That tells us that this settlement outputs about three times less uh, light than the previous one. Uh, let me show you now the so we discussed the the types of different overlays and we i also have a, a cloud and aurora layer uh, these are not exactly uh, light pollution layers but can help you like uh, if you want to measure uh, sky darkness you, you try to avoid uh, aurora and of course of course clouds uh, and the map also contains uh, different not not just overlays but features like uh, sqm sqc and observatories sqm features are basically uh, readings that users submitted to the map and are displayed uh, on the map for other users to see. Basically, they're sharing their information about a certain location, how it looks like. Uh, this will, we will see this in a moment. Uh, and the next is the SQC. SQC feature is even better. It, it shows you how the, the all sky uh, looks like it's it's uh, basically um, an image of, with a fisheye lens that covers the whole sky, and you can see um, not just how the light pollution looks like, but also you get uh, numerical values and so on. Uh, then we have the layer observatories, which uh, shows us uh, locations of uh, observatories around the world. 
uh, these features can be turned on by going into the menu and for example let's select sqml features and we can see that uh, there are quite a few of them in in poland in this location which is which we found that is very dark and uh, if we click on one of them you get various information like uh, what the value of the sky was uh, what kind of conditions the, the measurement was taken, uh, for example, uh, the moon phase and moon altitude and sun altitude, and of course the date, and uh, perhaps uh, some comments about the location. Uh, the users can submit uh, these data using the Unihadron uh, SQM device. This device looks like looks like this. And it's uh, quite affordable device costing around 100 euros. Uh, and it gives us a result of sky dark, how dark the sky is in a matter of seconds. And it's very easy to use. And when you get the reading, you just uh, sub submit the, uh, the result uh, to my map by going to extend menu and then opening the SQM form by clicking on a location when you took the, the reading and filling the, the info and submitting it. And that's it. Very simple. Uh, so the, the SQC feature is much more interesting, but also much more complicated to use. Uh, let's see. There are a few users who actually have this equipment and are submitting the, the images. And this, this is how it looks like. I, I won't go into detail, uh, but you can uh, contact me or, or see the help pages in, uh, uh, in my page about SQC. Uh, so the next thing I would like to show you um, is uh, the uh, statistics of every country in the world, which is also included in, uh, in my website. If we click on the toolbar on the upper left side of the map, we get uh, a table which shows us uh, the radiant statistics per country. And if we click, for example, um, the EEA plus UK and Switzerland, we get the countries in, in, in Europe. And the most important, in my opinion, uh, column is uh, the radiation per 1000 population. It basically tells you how much light escapes to space per 1000 people. Since we lit stuff because of people, you know, uh, and we can sort it, of course, and we can see that the most <laughs> efficient country is, is Germany. Uh, Germany is very efficient at lighting roads, cities, and, and, and such for their inhabitants. In fact, uh, if we look where Poland is, we can see that uh, it's almost two and a half times better than, than Poland. Uh, and we can compare other countries and so on. Uh, countries that have an asterisk uh, at the end of the name uh, are influenced by Aurora. So the, the values are not really to be trusted. Aurora really affects how the satellite sees light pollution. When the aurora is strong, it's uh, in, almost indistinguishable from light pollution, you know. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, we can also see the detailed statistics of each country. If we click on the name of the country, for example, let's try Slovenia, <laughs> and we can see per year how, how the uh, values move up and down. 
and we also get numeric values and so on. Uh, now I want to show you uh, a, a recent addition to my um, to my application. I mean, the, the recent addition, the tool uh, that has been recently added, and it's uh, called uh, Zenith Brightness Simulation. This tool can tell you uh, how much does a particular settlement contribute to your Zenith sky brightness? And also what would happen if its radiance would be cut in half or increased by, for example, twofold. So for example, if we say that we want to see what would happen in this location here, we click on the location and it will draw a circle which will show us, uh, this is a circle of uh, 200 kilometer radius. And this, all this light in a, this 200 kilometer radius affects the zenith sky brightness at our location. So it's a, it's a huge area. So for example, we have this city of uh, Lviv yeah, in, in Ukraine, which uh, unfortunately is being bombed. Uh, for example, let's say that this area is going to be shut down. You know, that's, for example, let's say that uh, the inhabitants have decided that they will cut their um, street illumination by half. So what would happen if they do that? We can see that this area contributes about 16% of Zenith sky brightness at our location. So 16% is not that great. So if, if we uh, reduce this 16% to zero by dragging this slider, we can see that we only get about one hundredth of a magnitude darker sky we have to know that the sky here is already very, very dark. So 100 magnitude may sound a, a little, but it can, it, it is a lot, you know, when the sky is already dark. But in the other way, you can increase, you know, the tenfold. What would happen if, if, if this area would increase its uh, light output that by 10 times? We can see that the contribution grew from 16 to 65%. And our, our location just got brighter by 0 0.1 magnitude, which is quite a lot. There, there, it's, it's quite a big difference between uh, 22 and 21.9. Uh, it's a quite a lot, a big difference. So this is mainly uh, the tool for people who are a little bit more enthusiastic about light pollution, or they want to prepare some reports for governments, for, for dark sky association and so on. Uh, this is not aimed for, uh, how should I say, general public, but it, it is a, a very useful tool nonetheless. So, um, what I'm working next on, on, on the map, they, you, people always ask me, what will you do next and so on. And I uh, always have something in my mind to do. And the next thing to do uh, will be uh, removing the outliers 
from the map. So the, the variations between years will be less uh, erratic. So the trend charts will be smoother and, and like I said, less erratic um, and more precise. Uh, so if somebody leads a fire somewhere, it won't register on a yearly uh, map uh, as an, an event, <laughs> you know. Uh, so that's uh, almost everything from my side. Uh, I've been told there's a tradition to ask audience uh, a question uh, um, that was actually answered in, in this lecture. So the question uh, is... Well, please wait, please, please wait, uh, wait a second, because okay, I okay. need to uh, pause the question in the chat uh, for okay. everyone. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so, you, so that's the uh, end of the presentation. Am yes, I right? Th that's the end of the presentation. Okay, so thank you, thank you very much, uh, Yuri, for this uh, lecture. Uh, I must admit that I myself learned uh, a lot uh, during it. So uh, I think now everyone knows how to find best places for stargazing and uh, how to use um, light pollution map. Uh, so thank you very much. And now, uh, yes, we can uh, proceed with our traditional quiz. Uh, so as always, uh, the first person to answer the question correctly will win a little astronomy car uh, reward. Uh, it will be sent later to the winner. Uh, so uh, Yuri, Yuri will ask the question. And in the meantime, we will send the question in two languages to the Zoom chat, uh, English and Polish. Uh, so Yuri, please uh, go on. Okay, so the question is, what is the darkest country per capita in Europe? So we are waiting for uh, answers. And I think uh, we've got a correct answer from uh, Agnieszka Marszałek, uh, Niemcy, which is uh, Germany in English. Is that correct, Yuri? That is correct. Uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, so congratulations to the winner. Uh, we will be contacting you about your uh, reward. Uh, please send me your email address on private chat uh, so that we can um, arrange everything uh, after the meeting. So now is the time for uh, participants to ask questions to our lecturer. So if anyone has any questions, please post them on uh, Zoom chat, either in English or Polish, and then we will translate it. So uh, we have one question from Elvin Torreit. Uh, will removing outliers uh, reduce the impact of Aurora? Yeah, thank you for the question. It's an excellent question. Uh, and uh, I would say, yes, it will, but not completely, unfortunately. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the process of illumination aurora is a little bit more complicated just by just uh, running a simple outlier uh, algori removal algorithm. So the, uh, the, the aurora might still escape <laughs> my algorithm, but uh, for the um, statistics page, where which um, uses uh, uh, which shows you that the statistics, uh, I already removed the uh, the aurora by by hand, but it's not perfect. It's always uh, um, a little bit that escapes, so it's um, very very hard to remove it. You know. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much for your answer. Uh, we have another question in Polish. Uh, in, so in Polish it is, ile lat pan pracuje nad tą aplikacją? Uh, and in English, uh, how long have you been working on this application? Ah, the first version, I think, was published in 2013, I think, or maybe 12. So it's uh, it's been almost a decade now. 
and uh, every year there's uh, something new to to add and um, i really enjoy working on it yeah uh, so uh, that's very interesting to hear uh, oh and i have a question on the private chat uh, uh, so is it possible to see on this light pollution map uh, the uh, lighting of the church in Sobotnia Wielka because its lighting, its illumination has been modernized uh, some time ago and is it possible to see the change after, before and after the modernization? Uh, if, the modernization if the modernization was good, then sure, it can be seen. Uh, but um, there's a a little problem, you know, uh, because the satellite that passes over the the church always passes at around uh, 1.30 in the morning. So if they, by any chance, turn off the, the light before 1.30 in the morning, then the, the area that satellite observes is always dark. So nothing will be seen. And also, uh, because the satellite is very insensitive to to blue light it is quite possible that the that the um, that the change won't be so drastic you know because the the recent addition uh, of leds um, kind of um, doesn't uh, work very well with uh, how uh, the uh, this satellite detects uh, light this is the problem and this problem will be solved in a few years i think because uh, europe is preparing to launch a satellite which will be well not just for light pollution but with, it will contain a, 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 an instrument which will be used only for monitoring light pollution um, yeah, so that's uh, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, and we are now sharing the screen uh, of the image, uh, satellite image uh, of the Sopotnia Velka. And there was, uh, it was an older image when the church uh, wasn't, was being, uh, was, was being illuminated for the entire night. So there was uh, that, that big uh, point yeah, uh, with the, the, more light pollution. Yeah, I would like to say there's also uh, another application I developed, which is called Light Trends. Um, it's also accessible by uh, going to the browser and entering lighttrends.lightpollutionmap.info. And in this application, you can actually see changes on a monthly basis, not on yearly basis. So you can yeah. see if they turned off something you 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 will see the drop in 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 light yeah. yeah okay i see thank you very much and we have two more questions uh, so the first one is from piotr novak do you think that led street lights are, are worse than old sodium lamps well uh, they are how should i say they are worse because not because of uh, the technology but because leds are so much uh, first cheaper to make and when something is cheaper you always put more of it because because you can afford it and the other thing is um, leds are better because um, not because of the technology per se but also because the luminaire is more modern it's usually cut off and it has clearer clearer glass than the old uh, sodium lamp which is 30 years old and uh, if we want to illuminate uh, a certain street with a led we need like three times less uh, less light to, to illuminate but not also because the, the LED, LED are so much better, but because 
the uh, we we are actually illuminating streets way way higher than they are actually necessary uh, for pedestrians to see they they only need like half a lux or uh, 0.2 lux to see the the pavement and also if the pavement is a bit uh, brighter you know it's not black we need even less illumination and this is how we solve the problem not by just uh, changing the technology of illumination yeah that's probably uh, very true so thank you for this answer and there is uh, one more question from uh, Tomasz Zaraś uh, can I ask where it is really the darkest uh, in Poland because opinions are sometimes divided I have SQM and I will try to do something about it very interesting study yeah uh, measuring light pollution is not um, so simple as it uh, seems uh, at first glance uh, because you actually have to measure the same spot for the whole year to get the, a precise reading because the 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 conditions are so widely different by even every other night is a different and in the magnitude of the of the sky just uh, jumps up and down by a, a half a magnitude that that is a huge huge number and uh, the only way to combat this is to take a lot and a lot of measurements it's not enough to you know to to see a clear sky let's go to a mountain and use our sqm meter and go home and this is the result for this uh, location that is not precise this is not science you, you need to do a, a a whole lot of measurements on this location to get a, a, a reliable uh, uh, reading and uh, and the, the only thing is the only way is to install a, a permanent sqm meter or, or some uh light measuring device and measure it for the whole year that's that's the only way yeah uh, sure uh, we have two more questions uh, so that's a lot of questions today uh, one was sent in the private chat uh, is it possible to see the data uh, on your map uh, from before the 2012 yeah uh, well uh, the problem is that uh, uh, the satellite the satellite generation that you, that is used to uh, provide data uh, was uh, only launched uh, on uh, 2012 so the data prior to 2012 doesn't exist but it it, it, the different kind of data exists. It's uh, from a uh, uh, from a defense satellite, uh, which um, produces way worse results. But then again, uh, it's uh, better than nothing. Um, uh, if you go to the website I mentioned earlier, light trends dot lightpollutionmap.info you can uh, turn on the layer which is called dmsp um, and this layer will uh, show you the data from satellites uh, which is i think earliest date is uh, 19 uh, 9, 92 i think yeah so uh, it's 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 a different satellite a different uh, imaging uh, platform and uh, it it has a lot of uh, drawbacks like uh, in in city centers the the core of a city is is burnt you know it's uh, it, it's gone off the chart so the sensors can the sensor can't record it anymore so uh, the the cores of the cities are, are um, not linear anymore so that's one problem and the other problem is uh, the resolution is uh, quite a lot lower than the uh, maps from the vii rs 
Okay, that's a great answer. Uh, and another question from Piotr Nowak. Mm. In Polish, jak wysokość nad poziomem morza wpływa na zanieczyszczenie światłem, czy mapy uwzględniają? And in English, it's uh, how the uh, heights above the uh, sea uh, um, is uh, affecting the uh, light pollution and does do, do your maps, uh, you know? Um, uh, yeah, I know what you're trying to say. Are, yeah. are, are accounting for that, yeah. Yes, uh, yes. The the World Atlas uh, is um, actually uh, aware of the uh, uh, height above the sea level. So the the SQM um, reports reflect the actual height. So if you go on a mountain, the the sky is darker. I don't have the precise number how how they do it. Uh, but if you look at the paper, which is, uh, I have a link on the original paper, which was uh, the basis of the calculation of the World Atlas 2015, uh, there might be some clues uh, how the, uh, the height affects the, the, how the altitude affects the, uh, the sky brightness uh, calculation. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, there is also a comment from Andre Mohar. Uh, it seems that the darkest spot of Poland is either small part on border with Lithuania or small spot with border with Belarus. So, uh, that's, so what, what's uh, the question? <laughs> that's just the comment uh, from the chat. I'm just uh, reading it uh, loud for everyone to hear it. Okay, so uh, I see that there are no more questions, uh, so we can proceed with the last part of our meeting. Uh, so we would like to ask everyone to uh, rate this meeting, uh, whether you enjoyed it or not. Uh, so please post your rating, uh, a number bet uh, between one and six, uh, where six is the highest rating and one is the lowest rating. So there is a uh, poll uh, on the Zoom. I think everyone should be able to access it. Yeah, we have some votes. Thank you very much for your uh, ratings. Uh, okay, so there are no more questions. Uh, so I think we'll be finishing our meeting. So biggest thanks to our great lecturer, uh, Yuri Stare. Uh, it was a pleasure to listen to your presentation uh, and to your answering of the questions. Uh, so thanks uh, everyone for participating in today's meeting. See you at the next lecture, which will happen somewhere in April. Uh, this time it's going to be conducted by an expert from Poland. So stay tuned for further information, which will be posted on our websites uh, and Facebook uh, and Instagram pages of Polaris OPP Association and our partners Dark Sky Slovenia and Bivar Mirke. Uh, so thank you once again, Yuri Stare. Thanks everyone for participating and have a good night. Thanks for having me. <laughs> thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.